This is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast, hosted by Roman Prokopchuk, bringing you all things digital marketing, tech, business, and motivation. What's stopping you from becoming relentless in all aspects of life? Are you ready to become a digital savage? Let's get into today's episode. Hey everyone, this is Roman Prokopchuk, and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me John Hargrave. John is the CEO of the blockchain content marketing agency Media Shower, publisher of BitcoinMarketJournal.com, and author of the Simon & Schuster book, Blockchain for Everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Roman. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great interview. Yep. So tell me a little bit about your journey. How did you get to where you are today? I started out as a comedy writer and I started doing comedy writing about the the time the internet was born. And I became, uh, I created one of the first internet comedy sites called Zug.com. And I kind of became known as the guy who explained technology in uh, a funny way. So I took this love of humor and humor writing that I had and this love of technology because I was kind of a geek at heart. And I kind of fused them together. um, And I found that that was a really valuable thing the world needed. And uh, over time, uh, that evolved into other types of technology as well. Because uh, in the early days of the internet, like it was hard to even describe why you would need the internet at all. It seems hard to believe. But over the course of my career, I was able to do that with many other uh, technologies which, uh, and I wrote four books leading up to my my latest book, which is called Blockchain for Everyone, uh, where I do the same for this new um, important technology called blockchain, upon which these new digital currencies like, uh, like Bitcoin are built. So describing them in plain English in a way that's really funny and entertaining is, uh, is how I got here. Oh, that's awesome. So how did you uh, come about founding your agency? What was kind of the process in that? What, what made you ju- uh, made that jump? And when did you make that jump? Yeah, so I was uh, working for uh, a large technology company. And my wife and I decided we wanted to uh, go off and start our own business. Uh, and we said to ourselves, we're going to save up enough money that we have kind of a cushion that we can uh, make the leap if if things uh, don't go well. So we had a fund, uh, a little bank account, and we called it the FU fund, uh, or the FUF for short. And once we got up to a certain amount in our FUF, we were going to go do it, go go make the leap and do it full time. And we did. We did. We saved up enough money. And then my wife quit her job first and went to work for this this kind of budding agency that we had full time. And then uh, a few months later, I did the same. And it's terrifying to make that jump uh, if you are used to living uh, a life working for other people. But it's been so rewarding. It's been just the greatest life journey. Uh, And that was about 10 or 12 years ago. And we've never looked back. It's just been such an amazing journey as we've built up this amazing team uh, of writers, editors, designers, and uh, many other folks who make up this great company called media shower that's awesome yeah and like you said it's often the the scariest uh point to make that leap from uh you know full-time employment under you know a w-2 to did you have a similar story roman did you do the same i well i got into digital marketing at a necessity in 2008 when the economy kind of tanked so i you know picked it up myself um i started uh my agency in 2012 and kind of did both still had my feet you know in different agencies as well as taking on clients and having a format where everybody's remote and i can activate a project and just you know basically management and be the uh tactical head of it and it can basically run itself and uh check in on it so it's kind of a a remote situation where i can you know take on other other things and different revenue streams in that sense I know so many people who have a similar story where they're either working a day job and kind of they've got a side hustle 
you know, where they're or they're doing gigs sort of on the side or kind of building their own thing. And um, so I, I suppose that's our, our story as well. So I could really relate to that. And it's a great way of kind of kickstarting your own business, which, you know, obviously creates jobs, creates more wealth. Uh, and it's just a great lifestyle. Yeah, I agree. It's it's very beneficial, but like like you said, it's it's oftentimes hard and scary to get into and getting past that barrier of figuring out when your next paycheck will be, uh, if your business is going to make it. So it is a, a scary endeavor, but once you take that leap, it's very rewarding. Yeah. So what motivates you to succeed? Well, I have, a, I guess I have an inner drive or a hunger you might call it, uh, to make a mark on the world, as Steve Jobs said, to, uh, uh, and to some degree, it also can be learned. So the way that I keep my, my personal drive or hunger really high is uh, a combination of meditation. I'm a big believer in it. I meditate for 28 minutes every morning and try to do it the same in the afternoon. Um, what that does is kind of clears your mind of a lot of the baggage or the sort of uh, obsessive thoughts that you might be carrying around throughout the day. And it really helps you keep focused on your mission and your purpose. And it really does help for me uh, rejuvenate my desire to, to, to make something great in the world and to really leave the world better uh, than I found it. And the second thing is an, an intellectual curiosity. So continually um, following my passion into new areas. And that's what we did with this uh, agency, Media Shower, which was we had built it up to a 2 or $3 million business. No, that's awesome. No, that's great. Um, and I think uh, the, the market got really high and now it's kind of uh, falling, moving up, moving down. So I think it's important for people to understand um, to not jump necessarily out on a bandwagon, understand what you're investing and the right. potential of it more so, not necessarily the coin itself, but the technology and the you know implications it has on you know everyday life and uh, look at it from that perspective. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of the book is me trying to figure out, well, how do we kind of think about investing in these new uh, technologies. In other words, how do we consider, you know, investing in Bitcoin as opposed to our, you know, standard kind of stocks and bonds uh, and so forth. And what I find at the end through much research, and this is some charts from the book, if you can see this, is you think about it in terms of an overall investing portfolio which should be mostly stocks and bonds, mostly traditional investments, but with a small amount allocated toward these digital assets, which are also called cryptocurrencies, uh, these Bitcoin and other types of uh, digital tokens or coins. And you think about it as a small slice, it's kind of your mad money. It's between two and 10% of your overall investment portfolio. And if you had done that three years ago, if you had invested $10,000 in that mix, that $10,000 would have grown to somewhere between $100,000 and $200,000 uh, in just three years. And so that's what we end up learning at the end uh, of the book. And I think that's a real contribution for the world right now as we try to make sense of this new space. Yeah, and I think it's important, like you uh, specified in the book, that it should be a small portion of your portfolio because a lot of people basically, when it hit close to 20,000, started maxing out credit cards and thinking it would go to 100,000 and then it just tanked and they didn't know what to do. But that's just kind of, you know, sound investing advice in general. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that is exactly <laughs> The point that we make over and over again in the book is it's investing, it's not gambling, it's not speculating. And that's the kind of behavior we want to we wanna shy away from and think about how do we grow wealth responsibly, like starting a business, like starting a business is a risk, right? But ultimately, if you do that well, that is a long-term wealth builder for you and all the people who work for you and for the economy. Yeah, I agree. So what's one thing that you may have had as a weakness that you've turned around and utilized as a strength today? 
Well, I uh, think that, uh, look, being a lifelong learner to what I call our skill stack, right? So that's what I do in the book is I take this, you know, understanding of, of digital marketing where I've worked my whole career. I've built this agency and then I fuse it with this new financial technology called blockchain and I end up building something even better. So it's a story of kind of personal reinvention, which I think we all have to constantly do. We've got to reinvent ourselves and add to our skill stack. But at a larger level, it's about the reinvention of our economy and our society with this new technology. So it's like my story, our company's story is kind of a snapshot of this larger story that's taking place with entrepreneurs, with marketers around the world. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's important for most people. Um, not everybody is as driven, like you said, to, to pick up those new skills. But I, I get to a point where um, I can't feel complacent. When I feel complacent, I have to learn something new. And like you said, a new skill to constantly kind of seek knowledge and things I'm interested in and uh, learn and, and gain more expertise because that complacency is kind of the the killer of innovation and uh you know moving forward and reaching your goals yeah complacency is a good word and that does capture kind of how it felt at the beginning of the book uh, i also described it as feeling kind of bored kind of like i had mastered all of these various you know scenarios no i agree so what's one piece of advice you have for the audience personal or professional well, I think that, uh, again, we are called upon to constantly reinvent ourselves. No, that's great. And I agree. So I really appreciate you coming on today. Can you let the audience know how they can find you? Yeah, so uh, I'm on LinkedIn. You can connect with me uh, at uh, John Hargrave on LinkedIn. I'm also on Twitter at Sir John Hargrave. And you can get a copy of uh, Blockchain for Everyone. This is a special offer for your uh, viewers and listeners. They uh, have a special copy of the book that comes with $25 in cryptocurrency. Nice. Thank you again for stopping by today. Thanks for having me, Roman. My pleasure. This podcast has been brought to you by Nova Zora Digital. Find out how Nova Zora Digital can help your company grow online. Learn more at NovaZoraDigital.com. Until next time, all you digital savages.